Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Top Gun, we are following Meg Ryan to inner space. In inner space, we are going to follow Dennis Quaid to the right stuff. Right stuff, we are following Ed Harris to Apollo 13. Bill Paxton from Apollo 13 to a Predator 2. Then uh, Adam Baldwin to Independence Day. Test pilot Tuck Pendleton wants to make history. Supermarket clerk Jack Putter needs a vacation. Sir, I'm Jack. Sorry. You're late. That's not good. You know it's coupon day. Lieutenant Pendleton is about to be miniaturized and then injected into this rabbit. Rock and roll. But something went wrong, and Tuck's about to get a new destination. <laughs> Inside Jack Putter. I'm in a man. Hello, can you hear me? I'm possessed! Now, Jack's got twice the problems. How you doing, Jack? But he's double the man. <laughs> with Tuck on his side. Can you more cows? <laughs> in his gut. <laughs> and on his case. You're not gonna back groceries all your life, are you, Jack? And only 24 hours left for Jack to get out of danger. So that Tuck can get out of Jack. Dennis Quaid, Martin Short. Give yourself a shot of adventure. Inner space. There we go. Ready? No. Yes. Hello and welcome to the Fire Pit Podcast. I'm Dan, British name Nigel. And last week we all watched Top Gun, a wonderful palate cleanser from Pathfinder in Doom. Thoroughly. But right now we are still on the road to Independence Day. I don't mean the holiday. I mean the 1996 summer blockbuster starring Harry Connick Jr. But that is not what we're watching tonight. Uh, I will kick it to Tom now, who's going to tell us exactly what we're watching tonight. Well, thank you, Dan. I am Tom, British name Thompson. And I actually have a few corrections from uh, last week. So uh, the first correction um, pertains to my list of films. Um, so... For the I, last time, Dennis Quaid is not in Independence Day. You are correct. It's Randy Quaid who's in Independence Day, who is in Ice Harvest. He It was Randy Quaid, I meant to say, not Dennis Quaid. So want to make that correction to the five or seven bots that were trying to yell at us. This is what directing Nicolas Cage must feel like, huh, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> well, tonight we are going to be watching Inner Space, 1987 film um, starring uh, Dennis Quaid, excuse me, Martin Short, and our connector from Top Gun, Meg Ryan, who has more of a lead role here, but she was romantic interest in the last film, which uh, was a connector to Starship Troopers from Michael Ironside. Um, who had been we were connected to from Clancy Brown, who was in Pathfinder. I had got that wrong the last time. It was Clancy Brown, who was the one before Michael Ironside. Michael Ironside was our connector from there to Top Gun. So now we are with Inner Space, and now I kick it over to Josh. Thank you, thank you, Thompson. Um, hello, my name's Josh, British name Reginald. Tonight, we are watching the 1987 classic movie, Inner Space, starring Dennis Quaid, Martin Short, and, as you already mentioned, our connector from last week, Meg Ryan. Um, let's see, Inner Space, as already mentioned, released in 1987, has a runtime of 120 minutes. It is rated PG-13, right? Yes. <laughs> um, 
No, Probably PG. Whenever... I apologize. Yeah. Rated PG. Um, let's see. Had an opening weekend of four point seven million dollars. Opened on uh, July fourth weekend. Oh well, wow. so, yeah. so it does kind of kind of fits with the theme in even more ways. So you know, I wonder if we should have done that. <laughs> like the road to Independence Day should have just been all movies opening up on the Fourth of July weekend. <laughs> wow, that would have been interesting. Maybe next year. Next year. Maybe yeah. But uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. So that's all I got for uh, the intro. Um, you know, oh, I have hey, far... also also uh, guys, this is starring Robert Picardo. That's right. The good doctor from Star Trek Voyagers in this movie, mm-hmm. isn't it? The movie also has Vernon Wells, who was the uh, gay but not gay bad guy in uh, Mad Max 2, and the gay but not gay bad guy in Commando. I'm sorry, you're never going to convince me that Vernon Wells' character wasn't a little homosexual in Commando. <laughs> in fact, if you Google <laughs> if you Google Vernon Wells, Mad Max 2, he's wearing an outfit that everyone just assumes that we're all going to be wearing when the apocalypse finally hits at the end of 2020. And so let's just admit, it, when the apocalypse hits, everybody's going to be a little bisexual. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to have the internet, so what else are we going to do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's um, this is an interesting film. I, I have some fond memories of this movie as a kid. I think growing up, mom and dad got a cable box and one of the first ones we ever had in the house. And they got one of the movie channels for free, Showtime, HBO, Cinemax, one of those movie channels. And this movie played constantly. And I would watch it when I was home from school during the summer. I have fond memories of this movie, but I actually admittedly haven't seen it in a while. So I'm kind of looking forward to this tonight. Yeah, I, I remember the VHS days. We, My dad would recorded it from like... Um hbo and stuff yeah i watched it constantly as a kid I, but i know there was a lot of stuff i did not get back in the day i'm looking forward to picking up on that adult humor oh yeah same here like i, I it was on netflix or is on netflix i don't know like and i probably rewatched it within the past year or two but it was one of those situations where it's like i turned it on it was background noise and i really wasn't paying attention to it so i'm looking forward to actually paying attention to it tonight but yeah i love this movie growing up this is probably one of the few inspirations of that led me to want to become an astronaut, you know? It just The whole concept of being inside of something in a foreign environment just always been interesting to me. Yeah, uh, it, it's an interesting concept for a science fiction film, that's for sure. It's I'm still wrapping my head around that one a bit. So you had Star Trek, you had Star Wars, you had God knows how many star sh- sci-fi films and anything, and, but the film that made you want to be an astronaut... Not the film, but one of them. Uh, you can have multiple sources. And also keep in mind, of those films in the late 80s, like, shit, I was only uh, four years old when this movie came out, so I probably didn't get actually appreciate it until the early 90s, so long after it was on VHS. In mind, this was the most practical effects of them all. Even Star Wars and uh, Star Trek, I didn't get into until mid-90s, long after that. Like, I remember watching this long before I was into Star Trek and Star Wars. He was sitting down the whole time. It was a cramped environment. And I remember not being claustrophobic watching this film at all. And you should have been. You don't feel claustrophobic watching Star Trek. Oh, not very normal, true. No. Yeah, very true. I mean, you're literally claustrophobic watching this movie. And you would be very claustrophobic watching any Apollo mission. I mean, mm-hmm, when we mm-hmm. get to Apollo 13, think about it. Yeah, and I kind of like the movie's premise that he has a limited supply of air. So they have to race against the clock to get him out of Martin Sheen or Martin Short's body and embiggened. That's a word, right? The Simpsons made that word. So, you know, they embiggen him. Did, did we want to uh, discuss any uh, connectors or anything? Well, we, I know we, we, we did have want to have some discussions on the potential going from Apollo 13 to Independence Day. Like, oh, I know last right. Week, yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted to mention, and t- uh, both Josh and I independently came about this, but there's another connection from Apollo 13 to Independence Day without going to big which was the original idea of going from big with ha- to has Robert Loggia and then uh, going from Robert Loggia to Independence Day. Apollo 13 also stars Bill Paxton, who is in Predator 2, who also which also has Adam Baldwin, who's and in Independence Day. This keeps with the science fiction theme. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and I as much as I love Big, it's a wonderful movie. Good it movie. It really does not keep with the sci-fi theme. It, it's it, I, I mentioned it last week's podcast. It definitely, you look at that list and you get that song in your head, one of these things is not like the other. So yeah. I was thinking maybe we should go with Predator 2. I know that, uh, Josh, I think you found a looser connection with um, Armageddon. Armageddon, which does also play into the quote-unquote astronaut science fiction space theme. Yeah, it's such a loose connection. I don't know if it even fits with our thing, you know. but I mean, the, the, the guy is in it. I just don't think it fits. 
I kind of want to. I kind of want to go with Predator Two for this reason, and then just let me explain. We're going from Top Gun, which had a bunch of pilots in it, to Inner Space, where Dennis Quaid plays a pilot going through an experimental process, to the right stuff with more pilots going to be astronauts, to Apollo Thirteen with astronauts going into space, and then if we go into Predator Two. It fits the science fiction theme of aliens from space. And yeah. it, it's bad guy aliens, which goes into Independence Day, which is also bad guy aliens. So it does fit. It does fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, Clever. I, was, I really wanted to find a way to shoe in because uh, the guy who plays um, Deke Slayton in uh, Apollo 13. What, what's his name? I forget his name, Dan. I don't know if you have the. But... Uh, I, I don't have it up on it anymore, but I, I, I know the guy you're talking about. Um... Oh, shit. Hang on. Give me two seconds. I, I don't want to go on. Without saying his name, it's blanking on me too. I can't. I can't think of it. Chris Ellis. Right. Right. And then Chris he Ellis. Was um, he was the Sky. principal in October Sky. I would have felt that that would have been just such a beautiful way to end our road to Independence Day. Oh yeah, I know that would have been good too. I remember that film. Yeah, because it's about you know, um, I can't think of the guy's name, but uh, Homer something. We're basically getting started into rocketry and all this he became a nasa rocket scientist basically i'm just like oh that would have just been so perfect but i couldn't find a connection from october sky to independence day but truthfully i think predator 2 fits with the alien motif because if independence day is astronauts and because if you think about it will but smith it, but, gets but rejected from nasa in the movie and but think about off of a... Independence Day is the culmination. Yeah. Independence Day really is the culmination of this journey because we have three movies that involve pilots. Actually, four. Because there's Apollo 13. They're all pilots too. Mm -hmm. So it's, we have movies that involve pilots, and then we have a movie that involves an evil alien, or not evil alien. Predators aren't evil, but it's a bad guy alien doing bad mm -hmm. guy things. And then Independence Day stars bad guy aliens and pilots. Yeah, I mean, you could almost <laughs> even say that these are all like. Uh... Yeah, I mean, fuck, think about it. Like, 96 is the invasion. Predator 2 happened in 93, three years prior. This mm -hmm. was just a test invasion, right? Right, right? Right, <laughs> right, yeah. Right. So I'm all just saying this that, stuff, it just, it just, this is all in, can, in universe. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, it just makes sense to me that we go with Predator 2 from Apollo 13 mm -hmm. because it's bad guy aliens and then independence day is both bad guy aliens and pilots <laughs> and all of our, this whole theme is, is aliens and pilots, aliens and pilots, you know, so, I kind of like it. So and all the, recap, all the movies do kind of fit. Who says we ain't deep <laughs> so to recap this week. So last week we did top gun, top gun. We're following Meg Ryan to inner space, mm -hmm. inner space. We are going to follow Dennis Quaid to the right stuff, right stuff. We are following Ed Harris to uh, Apollo 13, Apollo 13 to, uh, God damn it, I just blanked. We just talked about it. Predator 2. Predator 2. Predator 2. Um, to well, who, who are we following it? Predator 2 to. Uh, Adam, Bald Adam Baldwin's Pax in Predator 2. He's Bill one of those Paxton. Marines. Bill Paxton. Right, yeah. right. Bill Paxton from Apollo 13 to Predator 2. Mm -hmm. Then uh, Adam Baldwin to Independence Day. It all kind of makes sense, which and also it's hilarious that we got a movie with Dennis Quaid, a movie with Bill Paxton. And then when we get to Independence Day, we'll have a movie with Bill Pullman because all three of those guys were constantly uh, confused for the other throughout their entire careers. <laughs> yeah. In fact, Bill Pullman was just recently talking that he was stopped in a coffee shop. Uh, someone was surprised that they thought they read on the Internet that he had died a couple of years ago. And Bill Pullman oh, no. had to correct them saying, no, that was Bill Paxton. Rest in peace. <laughs> Yeah. Rest in peace. Game yeah. over, man. I tried really hard to find a way to connect aliens. I thought that would have been awesome too. I we're gonna have we're I, I love that eventually we are going to get to the fact that we're gonna get to all three of Bill Paxton's deaths by Alien, Predator, and Terminator. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> you know. did find a connection. I did find a connection, but it was a looseish connection through Terminator Two. Yeah. Um, John Connor's stepdad, his foster dad. Yeah. Like we could, that was a loose connection. We could have jumped through Terminator 2 from Apollo 13. Oh, that would have been a good one too. Mm -hmm. Anywho, so yeah, let's, I want to get into this because I'm really looking forward to watching this tonight. As am I. <laughs> We're off to the road to Independence Day. <laughs> Welcome back to another action-packed 
and family friendly episode of The Fire Pit. I am your interspersal host and inner Dennis Quaid, Tom. No ads this time around, either practice or professional, but we do have a quick announcement for a change. We have an email. You can now reach us at Curtain Call Entertainment Inc at gmail.com that's curtain call entertainment inc capital c capital c capital e capital i all one word at gmail.com send us your recommendations thoughts comments input output upgrades downgrades or whatevers and we might not read them we'll probably never respond to them but it'll make you feel good and you know what that's what really counts right Uh, That's all we got right now. Time to get back to the movie. Thanks for listening along, and as always, good luck. Yeah, he's a uh, 37-year-old man working as a cashier. I laugh, but the way my job search has been going. One day you'll get Randy Quaid inside of you. Oof. There you go. I could be so lucky. My luck and the way 2020 is going, I'm going to get Dennis Quaid. <laughs> oh, wait, no. I want Dennis. I yeah, don't want Dennis. I wonder what you'd I'm going to end, gonna end look, up Randy. Tom fucked it up and got it backwards again. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> All right. So that was Inner Space. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's. It's corny fun. I, it's a, I, it's good. I really enjoyed it. I have fond memories of this movie as a kid. Maybe I'm still looking at it through a nostalgia filter, but mm-hmm. it's one of those things. The practical effects still hold up. Yeah. Re- and, the uh, live action scenes, not so much, but mm. because it's it's obviously 80s, mm. very much 80s. Yeah. But then again, I always argue that the special effects of the 80s is in a league of their own mostly because it's not sullied by cg yeah yeah but but this is a, this is a spielberg movie well, not a spielberg movie because he didn't direct it but mm-hmm. it's a spielberg movie and he usually did pretty good on special effects try to do what he can i don't know i um i, I was, just still enjoyed it it's a it's a good look it's a cute little movie yeah you know? just a standard no well, not standard or just your simple action film yeah it had a little bit of action a little bit of a thriller a little bit of a romantic comedy mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. you know it kind of ticked a few boxes i can see why this was kind of a hit yeah um, well, and to, i got really it didn't make its money but it wasn't bad not domestically over when it, if you count international gross it made over 40 million dollars during its release it was i mean in terms of vibe the vibe I got from it, it's kind of not too dissimilar from modern Marvel films, really. It, there's no grand epic scope to it, but it's it's fun. Yeah, I mean, all yeah. honesty, we were talking about Ant-Man during this movie, and it gave off severe Ant-Man vibes. Well, I mean, nope. the, the, the premise is similar. Person shrinks. Like, not, hilar- not, hilarity uh, not, not, uh, not heist style, style type stuff, yes, but it does give like to the effect of very small scale effect mm-hmm. like not it's not like world ending major stuff but like very i'm not trying to have a pun here but small scale <laughs> plot stuff you know like no pun intended small scale <laughs> plot yeah it's like i said it's a cute little film it's got i think all of the actors and actresses turn in some pretty good performances in this movie seriously P- robert picardo playing martin short come on <laughs> yeah that was that was really good. That's that 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 part is probably worth um its own little section. But especially if you're familiar with Robert Ricardo and some of his other roles, I mean Voyager for one, Elaine's boyfriend in an episode of Seinfeld, and some of the other character actor work he's done. It's just you, you appreciate just how good of a character actor he is. Yeah, he's like I said, he's good. It's like I said, it's I just really enjoy the movie. It's it, it wasn't it doesn't have the scope or the the epic scale that top gun had last week but if this if i was of the right age in july 1st 1987 when this movie came out i absolutely would have gone and seen it in the theaters and i probably would have had a good time i mean yeah it had that science fiction aspect to it i can see why it was a hit it ticks a lot of boxes like i said it had a little bit of a romantic comedy in there so -hmm. people who like rom-coms could would have enjoyed this movie It, it was science fiction so people who enjoy science fiction movies would have enjoyed it 
it's a thriller, you know, a uh, race against the clock kind of a movie. It appealed to that audience as well. It ticks a lot of boxes, so yeah. I can see why a lot of people would like it. Although I can see this film not connecting with a lot of modern audiences. There were a lot of parts where it was it was just not, nothing was really happening. There were no major stakes. People were sitting around talking. They went to a club. They tried to do a little espionage here and there, but when... Dennis Quaid was saying inside. modern audiences and like 2020 audiences. Yeah, 2020 audiences, that sort of thing. It's just because this definitely doesn't cater to the ADHD crowd. No, no. It's like there are parts where Dennis Quaid was just sitting there talking to Martin Short's character, and had it been made today, he would have been attacked or constantly outrunning like white blood cells or something like that, or uh, oh, a yeah. disease, the cold, like Martin. Martin Short would have had a cold at the same time, so he's fighting off cold <laughs> diseases too. Yes, or or no, like if I were to say if this was to make be made modern, like the bad guy would have been injected into Martin Short significantly sooner, and it would have been a like a mm. back and forth, like they would have been fighting back and forth a lot longer. Yeah, it's like the pacing was definitely weird, definitely different from pacing from from films, action films in particular nowadays. Yeah, they're dead. Uh, like that one scene where they just had, uh, where he went into his apartment and they just got yeah. drunk together and was dancing, and then he's like, "Hey, I just realized I haven't seen you, and you haven't seen me. Let's see each other." Like mm-hmm. that never would have happened in modern cinema. Yeah, no. never would have happened. That kind of, um pacing that's not, i'm not going to say slower pacing but um the pacing where it takes its time you don't see that unless it's in a netflix series and you have like seven or 12 episodes to really sprawl it out this again i'm not complaining this is not me that's not a dog on this film i thought it was it was great to just enjoy these people and get to yeah, know them that's character development i mean it's just like it was a, it was a refreshing to be able to see these characters act human mm-hmm. you know it's like you get to watch these people like you know what dude we just had a very intense scene let's have a fucking drink you know <laughs> yeah exactly although, you, although i do love how at the beginning of the movie we called out that's like the robotic arm was like completely unnecessary and then at the end of the movie they were like what the fuck is the point of this <laughs> like what was our what was our theme for this movie science, science. <laughs> yeah god this was a fun film to watch it was i mean it was it was a lot of fun to watch it, 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 it was it didn't take itself seriously like obviously like it took itself very seriously at the very beginning of the film mm-hmm. and then towards the end of the film it's like oh my god Seriously, let's. Why did we do this? Get on with ourselves. <laughs> God, this was a good day, guys. I'm glad we got to watch this film. Yeah, you know what? Honestly, this was the nice um, respite from the uh, craziness that has been this whole entire week. Yeah, it, it was a nice little unwind kind of movie to take your mm. mind off of things for a little bit and just kind of enjoy a film. Yeah, um, I'm kind of bad kicking my parents off. <laughs> They, did they reconnect? No, I don't know if they did. They went to go play pool and listen to music. I They called me and they, I texted them. So, Mom and Dad, if you are listening to this, again, I apologize. I did not mean to kick you out. Uh, we were frustrated and decisions were made. Caleb, I love you, but uh, I don't feel as bad. <laughs> you didn't give birth to me. So, and I came before you anyways. So I'm the favorite. Yeah. Remember, I'm the one they wanted. You're the one they had to talk themselves into. So you were made so that I would be not the only child. <laughs> you were you were made was to your... be my companion. <laughs> exactly. So Nigel, do you want to give the final thoughts on this film? Yeah, well, like I said, my final thoughts are it's a really cute little movie that's kind of the... Um, Did you uh, really say cute? Yeah, it's a cute <laughs> film. It's a cute <laughs> little film. It's a good movie about... Or, I mean, it's a good movie that is just kind of the personification of that type of storytelling. I want to call it Spielbergian type movie that was prevalent at that time. I mean, think about the movies that are in or around this time frame. There's Gremlins, which the director directed that too. There's it's inner space. This is around the, you know, ET batteries, not included. All of these movies fit that kind of mold, just this kind of mold where it was fun 
semi innocent. Yeah, there were some adult themes in the movie, but for the most part, the movie does live up to its PG rating. It's not a, anything over the top. Mm -hmm. um, a fun, innocent movie that the whole I, I'm going to sound like a sales pitch. Literally, the whole family could have gone to this movie in 1987 and been fine. Dad would have liked the sci-fi parts of it. Mom would have liked the rom-com parts of it. And the crazy shit that Martin Short gets into, the kids would have laughed at. So it's it was a good movie. Final thoughts are, uh, I would say, six and a half out of ten. What would recommend? And just to add to that, too, when you mentioned earlier, it's like you just have a rough day, rough week. world's going crazy around you. Things are going wrong. You come home. Sometimes you just want to sit down and just watch something you can enjoy. It's not action-packed explosions all the time. It's not edge of your seat. It's not overly sappy, dramatic. It's just <clears throat> you, know, you can watch and just it had get some, into <clears throat> and have fun with. The, the movie had some. The movie has some engaging characters, relatable characters. Yeah. They have uh, funny bits, intense bits. And at the end, the guy gets the girl. And everyone seems to live happily ever after, at least until they get in the limo. And then it definitely set up for a sequel that never happened. But <laughs> um, I'm just saying, it, it was a good movie. I I really enjoyed it. And uh, so far, we've been we've been having a pretty good batting average ever since we got out of Pathfinder. We did Pathfinder. have a lull with Pathfinder, yeah. Paul, yeah, yeah. Pa Doom was, you know, it's funny. What's funny Doom was, was Pathfinder it was, it was a Pathfinder, so to speak. Ah! See what I did there? Yeah, Doom... Did you, did you, we had a good run at first. Like we, we did, you know, the rundown was a good movie. I enjoyed watching that. And, and Ninja Turtles was good. Ninja Turtles two, not so much. Um, rundown was good. Doom was hard to get through, but at least Doom had some cool I moments. Enjoy, in the I enjoyed gunfight. watching Doom. It wasn't a good movie, but I, I, I didn't hurt getting through it. Yeah. Pathfinder was like, painful really hard to get through like if i wasn't recording this podcast and i was trying to watch that movie i would have a either shut it off about halfway through and said okay i I'm never i never would have made it through on my own or yeah. i would have started uh if i didn't really want to pay attention to the try to pay attention to the film so i could give final thoughts at the end of it i would have started i would have tabbed out and started reading reddit or something like that you know mm -hmm. so it, it, that was a hard movie to get through and then but we've been we've been hitting pretty good star trek troopers was thoroughly enjoyable the side movie we watched that night of RoboCop was also just, um, I forgot how really good that movie is. And then we watched Top Gun last week, which I just enjoyed the hell out of it. Of course, Top Gun's one of my favorite movies of all time. Mm. And then this movie was a movie I hadn't seen in a while, but I had fond memories of as a child. And I'm really glad adult me doesn't hate it. Same. But I have watched movies as a kid that I love, and then I watch them as an adult, and I'm like, oh, God, why did I like this? Yep, yep. Yep, I'm right. So there I was. You. I'm not gonna lie. At some point in time today, I was. I hadn't seen this movie. I, it's been a long time since I've seen this movie. It might have been in high school the last time I've watched Inner Space all the way through, and I was really afraid that I wasn't gonna like this movie today. I was just. Def I, I had moments today where I'm like, oh, man, I really hope I don't hate this film. You know, but I enjoyed it. Adult me likes it just as much as kid me did. So mm -hmm. actually, adult me kind of appreciates it a little bit more because I know I get the adult humor in it and I understand the adult situations a little bit more, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Josh, what about your thoughts? Oh, let's see. My thoughts. Um, Science? Science. Science. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, honestly, I just, and I hate to be the music guy because I know I commented on the music last week. But that's okay. It's like, we all can bring something different here. Like, you know, it's okay to, to really uh, appreciate the scores and, and stuff like that. It's like, you know, it's like I felt like I, I really noticed the music last week as well as this week. Like, especially when he was escaping the, the cyborg dude again. It was very 80s. And it reminded me of, you know, Back to the Future and scenes. And uh, what was the other the movie that I, I felt like it reminded me of? Oh, um, not Goonies, but um, I know what you're talking about. You, you. <sighs> I'd have to go was, back. To was it, it Back was... to the Future? Back to the Future. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's like it felt very Back to the Futurey in terms of score, but it was very Spielbergian. And given well, yeah, that Spielberg but... was executive producer, but you know, I, I really dug the di or the uh, score. But as far as the plot, it was very you know paint by numbers. Mm -hmm. Like I felt it, and it feels weird saying this out loud. Top Gun had more of more depth to the plot. It did. It was, but it was also it was a bigger movie. Yeah. But then again, it, this one did feel like it had more depth than modern MCU movies. Yeah, mm -hmm. it 
it was definitely a um it didn't hold your hand like modern movies did no it didn't doesn't hold your hand and it's definitely what i you know you could call a holiday and it was it was a holiday release the movie came out july 4th weekend which i know that the movie that we're moving towards independence day also came out july 4th weekend but honestly this movie and independence day have a lot in common not plot wise the the plots are radically different Mm -hmm. but Independence Day also ticks a lot of boxes that the entire family could have gone to that movie and really enjoyed it. Dad, dad likes the um, the, the sci-fi, explosions the explosions, the ex- explosions yeah. and the science fiction. Mom digs the drama part of the story. Uh, the kids also love the explosions and the gunfights and the aliens and all that. So Independence Day is a I don't want to say it's a family film because it's it's not, but it's a family film. Like it's just it's not your traditional Dude, family. It was ninety six. I was. 13 years old dude i love that yeah, i remember you know, my, you can... my parents were so cheap they wouldn't buy me the posters so i made my own like i drew my own <laughs> posters and my parents weren't you know broke they were just cheap so i drew my own posters and i put them up in my uh room it's freaking beautiful man <laughs> yeah mom and dad if you're still listening i love you <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I agree with you, Nigel. This is, um, yeah, it's just on the same vein of a film that you just watch. You can watch to enjoy watching it. Yeah. The moral is, this is an adventure. Come with us. Yeah. This, yeah. That's what it was. Movie... It's, a, it's the movie. It's a movie that comes out on a holiday weekend, like 4th of July. And it's, I guarantee that the, uh, the advertisement for this movie was kind of like, hey, it's July 4th weekend. It's a holiday weekend. Everyone's off work. Kids don't have school because it's summer break. Hey, why don't you come to the movies for the day and yeah. you know you, watch? You know the stuff. other, you know the other thing I just thought about. Hmm. All the main characters in this movie, um, Martin Short and uh, Dennis Quaid, heavily flawed. Yes, yeah, thirty-eight-year-old cashier at a grocery store. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, uh, although I wouldn't call that a flaw, I don't like that mentality anymore. No, 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 no. like no, no. He's a hypo, like not even the cashier thing. He's a hypochondriac who like overstresses about everything. He eats a stress type thing. And then, like, Dennis Quaid, he's kind of a washed up. I mean, he's a late 30s lieutenant. He's an O2 when, and again, different movie. Tom Cruise, hypothetical. Like, you're looking at age versus rank. Tom mm-hmm. Cruise is significantly younger, but an O3, mm-hmm. whereas Dennis Quaid is older and an O2. Yeah, he's kind of implied to be a washed out pilot. This yes. is, he's taken this job he's an alcoholic he has he got beat up by a bunch of the other officers type thing so he's a washed up pilot he got dumped by his girlfriend in act one he has um, no appreciation for the good things in front of him and you know and going back to martin short you know he was he has no respect at his job so both of these characters are heavily flawed so they're both characters get a redemption arc mm-hmm. and they do and they like I said, they, and they all kind of quote unquote win at the end. You know, they, they, and they overcome themselves at the end. You can see that Dennis Quaid's character looks like he's turning a corner into being a more level headed, devoted person. Seeing his baby changes him in the movie. Like you see him, like, you know, it changes his outlook. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't know. Like I said, it's just it's a good movie. And then, yeah. And then look at uh, Martin Short's character at the very end of the movie. His, his whole art comes to a culmination when he like looks at the, the wannabe girlfriend, you know, because he's like, you know, you forgot we had a date last night. And she's like, yeah, whatever. And, and at the then, beginning of the movie, he was crushed about that. Like at the beginning yeah. of the movie, he was crushed that she kind of blew him off. And he's at the end. He's like, yeah, not a chance. I quit. And then I forget what he says to the doctor, but it's like, I'm cured. Yeah, I'm cured. Thank you. So it's just like he's totally all those loose ends. He's fixed. Mm. And he's like, I'm going to go save the day again. I'm done. This is it. I've closed all those doors. I'm fixed. All it took was Dennis Quaid being inside of him. And I think that's really the moral of the story here, guys. It's kind of funny. Dennis Quaid being inside changes Meg Ryan's character. And Dennis Quaid being inside changes Martin Short's character. That's and just, that's the moral of the story. We just need Dennis, yeah. and Dennis Quaid inside oh my of all God. of us. If, <laughs> if Dennis Quaid was in us now, there would be world peace. There would be no riots in the streets. No, Dennis no, Quaid needs yeah. to be inside of 2020. We need to put. <laughs> oh my God! Yes, put, yes, yes. Put Dennis Quaid inside 2020. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Make America Quaid again. Like just. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, road to Independence Day. <laughs> you know, I was waiting for that one point for this week. This was it. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Oh, my God. Thank you. <laughs> I'm literally crying. <laughs> okay. So what's the next what's next on the road, guys? Uh, next got- on the agenda is uh, we are sticking with Dennis Quaid in uh, Inner Space, which is great because we've just established that if Dennis Quaid is in 2020, it's better. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, we're uh, the next movie. We are sticking with Dennis Quaid. He has a smaller part in the next movie, which is kind of a like the opposite Orlando of where Cooper. we went. You know, which is kind of the opposite Actually, of where we. Isn't he the first uh, astronaut introduced in uh, the next one? I think so. He might think be he Gordon Cooper. Um, hang on, I'm googling something. Yes, we will be following Dennis Quaid playing Gordon Cooper. Where he will be, uh, he was actually in the last of the Mercury missions. And he was the last single uh, astronaut in space. Because ever since uh, his last, that mission, they, uh, the, no astronaut has been up by themselves. They've always been up in pairs, at, at a bare minimum. Mm-hmm. Faith 7, that was the name of his capsule, was Faith 7. So yeah, so the next movie we're going to watch, taking with Dennis Quaid, we're going to the right stuff. A movie about the start of the space program here in America, the Mercury astronauts. Although the movie does open up with the breaking the sound barrier. Chuck Yeager's got a big part in the second. Big big test pilots in the Mercury program. Yeah. Good, good, good movie. One of my favorite movies of all time. Actually, it's funny. The the next two weeks are two of my favorite historical dramas of all time. Um, I love Apollo 13 as well. So I'm really looking forward to the next two weeks. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to this whole block. Now that we switched it from Big to Predator 2, no disrespect to Big, fantastic movie. We'll um, have to circle around back to it at some point. Yeah, we will we'll get oh, to we'll it. I mean, a- we will find a link to Big because Tom Cru- or Tom Hanks is in just about everything in every decade. So we'll find, we will definitely watch a movie at some point in time that will link us to Big. Nice little bit of trivia. This Next week, The Right Stuff is so far, as of right now, the highest rated movie on Rotten Tomatoes we've watched, or we will watch. Um, nice. It has a 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. So Good reason. Oh, good reason. Yeah. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. But it's so far the highest rated movie we've seen so far, which yep. I understand when we, we started with some pretty rough stuff. <laughs> and now we're going to head into The Right Stuff. Could, could we say, gentlemen, that we're reaching for the stars? Shut up, Tom. Ah, And on that that note, I've been Tom. I've been Dan. And I'm Josh. (laughs) This has been been the fire pit. (laughs) Thanks for joining. And good luck out there, guys. (laughs) 